Hello, everybody. How you doing? Uh, so I'm here today to talk about automating your manual test suite uh, with Tempest plugin, scenario tests, and rally. Uh, this whole thing came about because we have a lot of uh, legacy tests that are completely manual right now. And I started talking to the QA guys about a month ago or so and trying to find a way that we can move away from this manual testing and to automating it. And uh, so that's where I made this prototype with uh, using Tempest the scenario tests and rally, uh, and it was quite easy to do actually. And I'm going to take you through it uh, in a moment. Uh, also presenting with me is Daniel Mulatto from Red Hat, and yes. I'm a, a senior software engineer with Dell. And it's not moving. Space, maybe. You space. gotta be kidding me. Space? No. Oh. <laughs> you gotta be kidding me. Did it freeze? I don't know. It's just working. Bear with me. Crashed. <laughs> <laughs> You must be kidding me. Hold on. Get your computer out. <laughs> oh, no, it, is, it doesn't work. <laughs> so, great to start. Yeah. Well, things happen. This is the back, guys. Should have a copy. Hold on, no. You want me to it? Hold on, one second. Okay. I should have a clean copy here. And let's save this. Fingers crossed. Yes. <laughs> awesome. Try again. No. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Good night. So, where's your? Are you gonna laugh next to me? Uh, right here. I said something to do with the cable. Yeah, 
It works. All right. <laughs> what an ovation. So, uh, background. So we have an existing test framework that has roughly 200 test cases. Some are relatively simple. Some of them are huge, like um, taking a commute, uh, compute node down from maintenance and moving all the VMs off it, that kind of thing. Um, the platform they use right now for manual testing is called TestRail. And it's um, more of a, a project management tool to me. It's, I don't know a lot about it, but from what I see, it's more of a project management tool than it is actually a test suite. You put your tests in there, it's a script, uh, and you can track all kinds of information around it, which is useful. Some of the benefits, um, it manages the test well. It does really good reporting. Um, and it's wide open, right? So it's manual testing. You can do whatever you want. So you have a lot of freedom in that respect. Obvious problems with manual testing. It doesn't scale. Uh, as we bring on more and more distributions, um, the grid becomes huge. So we're supporting more distributions, more hardware, uh, and it becomes you know, impossible for a QA team to handle. Um, Especially in large scenarios, if you have uh, a lot of steps, there's a lot of room for error, and something can go wrong. Uh, and it's also just a waste, right? You have resources that should be fixing problems, not doing something that can be automated. This is just a screen capture from TestRail. Uh, it's got a variety of reports. Uh, you can see the script in there that they would use for the manual uh, test component. Um, so after talking to them, I looked at you know, what was out there for tools. I've already was familiar with Tempest. I do a little bit of upstreaming there. I've worked with Rally, and I started looking at the scenario framework, uh, which, as I looked at it, really offers a ton of power. Uh, it allows you to do many, many different things that are cross-cutting across different APIs, and look like it fit the bill. So I went on from there and uh, created a prototype. OK, so just let me give you a quick overview. Just out of curiosity, how many of you know what Tempest is? Yes, from the audience. Just raise your hands. OK, quite a bit. I'm impressed. So congrats. I'd say that Tempest is one of the most widely used and less known open source projects. So basically, like, mm, this has been used in the gate for every patch. So whoever sends a patch, it goes over a ton of different gates, and it gets uh, to Tempest, and it, it, it's run the test all the time. So if you are already knew that, congrats on that again. So Tempest is meant to be used from, from the gate, uh, a dev stack, at, ideally a production cloud too. So basically, it uses like it, it interacts with API. It does whatever the API allows you to do. Also, uh, in addition, like uh, Tempest doesn't have any kind of branches like most of the OpenStack projects. We do use stacks because the uh, OpenStack API it's backwards compatible. So we do use like uh, one Tempest stack for like about three different releases. So what happens if you take into consideration that it runs? for all the uh, different projects and all the different gates, at some point, they start to go huge. So let's say I'm a great guy, and I know Tempest. I can review Tempest patches. But let's say I can do Neutron, too. But what, what would happen if I were to review Neutron, Sahara, then Silometer, uh, Ironic, Ironic Spector, whatever? I would fail miserably. So as Tempest, as Tempest started to grow huge, we decide to implement a plugin interface that would allow for a test to go back to their own projects so people would be able to review it with knowledge. Uh, if you check like that link, there's about like 50 plugins. So we decide to keep only the core projects, mainly Nova, because as of now there are also like plugins for, for Cinder and Glance. Yeah, but uh, basically like that was uh, why we want people to <laughs> to handle that. So, mm. 
I'll be just covering a little bit introduction about the Tempest plugin before, but uh, I want also just to introduce you about how do we handle this. So when we do release a Tempest stack, uh, it's tied to the global regs. What are the global regs? Uh, those are the requirements that are released by the dev stack and by the release team of OpenStack whenever we get uh, an actual release. So now it's for Newton and it'll be for Okata. Uh, when we do install a plugin, uh, that means installing either an over project or uh, an out of tree plugin. I'll be covering that. Uh, basically, we are installing an entry point that allows Tempest to discover the new subset of tools. In order to do this, uh, usually we are using visual environments or you could use assistant side packages too, but that comes with a drawback. Okay. So when you are using <coughs> DevStack and you want to use system side packages, it's really recommended to use this talks environment. So how, how many of you have been using this talks environment? Okay, not that many. Awesome, I guess we, need, we need to advertise this a little bit more. This would allow you to ideally discover all the plugins that are installed within your installation of OpenStack, either DevStack or you know, Triple O or whatever, and it would deploy there. Okay, so how do I create a Tempest plugin? First, let me introduce you briefly to what the stable APIs are. So basically, if I want to create a Tempest plugin, I would only need to import tempest.leaf, tempest.config, and tempest.discover. So what the hell are those? Tempest.leaf are the service clients and the stable interfaces, so that won't change. So if you are going to you type your plugin to a specific commit of Tempest, or you, you were doing that before, it shouldn't be needed anymore, because you are using the stable interfaces, and this is not going to change, so you shouldn't need to touch anything with your plugin. Then there's tempest.config, which is basically the Tempest configuration file, tempest.conf, and then the discovery for all the plugins. Okay, so let's say I want to create a plugin from scratch. I could either code it myself or use cookie cutter. If you don't know cookie cutter, uh, cookie cutter it's basically a templating system. So you just need to install cookie cutter and then use that repo and that would create as a scale for all your plugin needs. So as I said before, we could either choose to have our plugin in tree, which would mean to share the same repo as the project. For instance, Neutron uh, implements this kind of way, this way. So you have like the project and then the Tempest test and the Tempest plugins which lives within it. So that's not the recommended way. So at the Acuity team, we would love to have, I think it's, we think that it's gonna be much easier to have uh, a dedicated repo, because that way, that would allow you to decouple the requirements from the project, from the test project, because uh, otherwise, let's say, I'm a packager, I'm, out, I'm going to package everything into an RPN or Debian or whatever, and if I just want to install Neutron or whatever project, I'm going to be needing to install a ton of dependencies like that. Also, it would allow you to decouple another new thing. As I said, Tempest is frontless, so are, the so are the tests. But the projects don't necessarily, and they are usually don't, are frontless too. So you would be able to mix best of both worlds. The only drawback is that this uh, out of tree is a boot uh, for make you have to land two patches. The first one would be to the main project, and the test would be needed to be landing to a different project. Okay, and here's some, here comes the fun. So I told you that Tempest basically uses all the API and we, that we do have like the uh, split repos for the plugin, that we are uh, dropping tests like Sahara, Neutron, and so forth. But what would happen if I just want to do like a real life example of a test? So that's where we got the scenario test and that would do what a real life use case would be. Like, okay, I want to deploy a VM, I want it to upload an image, I want to create a network, I want to create a router, I want it to ping each other and so forth. So those are the tests that uh, are usually and are not still that much put abroad on the different repos. Um, also, 
those kind of managers would allow you to easily uh, create whatever you need in your methods. But uh, David will be giving some examples of with Rally. Sure. So I'll be letting him go of the use case. Okay. Thank you, guys. Sure. Uh, so the Tempest Scenario Framework. So the, the, the key class there is Tempest Scenario Manager Scenario Test. Uh, that has uh, hooks into all kinds of things you can do in OpenStack. Create an image, uh, create an instance and wait for it to start, um, attach a volume to that instance, all kinds of operations. There are basically macro functions that will let you do this. Uh, the base class is the Scenario Test. Um, but there are also a couple of uh, subclasses of that, you know, specified for specific scenarios for specific APIs, if you see networks, bare metal, encryptions, etc. I think what I'll end up with right now, right now my test or prototype just extends um, the base scenario test. I'll probably create my own scenario test uh, base class and inherit from that because we have some specialized things we'll probably need to add. So from there, uh, we get into Rally. Uh, is, are you guys familiar with Rally at all? So there's three main pieces to Rally. It's a deploy engine. I've never worked with this piece, uh, so I can't tell you much about it. Uh, benchmark engine, which allows you to do performance testing and create scenarios. And it's in some ways, the scenarios are familiar uh, to what you can do with, with the Tempest scenarios. But in, in the ben benchmarking side, the tests are more designed for running concurrently and trying to put load on it. Uh, my goal isn't to do that. It's to just validate the features are working. Um, so I, I stuck with using the, uh, the Tempest uh, framework. Uh, and verification. Verification in Rally just uses Tempest, uh, executes Tempest, stores the results in a database. So um, you know, at the end of the day, when you say uh, Rally verify, it's running Tempest. Here's a basic uh, architecture of the rally. Um, I stole this from their site, so you can see this anytime on their wiki landing page. So as I said, the prototype is only using the rally's verification features. So I'm not touching any other parts of it right now. So basically, I'm just using it to uh, execute Tempest, sort the results in a database, and have a database that I can report off of. Um, why not just use Tempest alone? Because you could. You could use this plugin just in standalone Tempest. I like Rally uh, because of persistence. It has a relational database. It stores all your results. Uh, reporting, there are some good reports in there, and there are easy hooks into creating new reports, uh, which Tempest by itself doesn't necessarily have. Uh, and it also supports multiple deployments. So you can do a spoken hub kind of thing. If you have you know, several stamps running OpenStack, you could have a separate deployment for each one and store all of the results in a single repository. Uh, and as I said, you, know, you could use this Tempest plugin on its own in just Tempest. So putting it all together, uh, the first thing I need to do is implement a Tempest plugin, the framework. Uh, the basic shell, uh, learn about the scenario framework, write a test, uh, install the plugin into the Rally deployment, which is its copy of Tempest, basically, uh, for that particular cloud you're talking to. Uh, run the test, uh, report on the test results, and you know, maybe make tweaks to the test, reinstall the plugin, and repeat. So here's a basic flow of inf information. You know, this call would uh, enter Rally, go into the specific environment for your deployment, uh, we'll talk, call the, the, the regex expression, which would um, locate the test that you installed with your plugin and execute that test. Uh, then it will store that data back in the Rally database, and then you can report on it. Oops. It's okay there. It's okay there. Yeah. Oh, good. So um, I, unlike uh, Daniel was pointing out, didn't know about cookie cutter. So I went to a, another existing plugin and plagiarized. And this is the basic source tree. Um, the main things to be concerned with are the setup.config and how you lay out the tree. Um, and 
You can also put API tests in, in your plugin. I'm not doing any API tests. I'm going to do a pure scenario plugin. And you can see my test in the tree there. So set up uh, dot config is where you uh, add your plugin's entry point. And you can see the uh, directive there, entry points. And it's pointing to my, uh, my plugin class. Then in your um, plugin class, uh, you have a load test, which you point it to a directory where your uh, tests are going to uh, exist. And when the plugin's loaded, it goes and searches the path and uh, makes all those tests available. This is just a basic uh, overview of my test, right? So um, most importantly, you need to document the test properly. I'm basically uh, word for word copying the script that they have in their uh, test rail application uh, into a doc string. So I you know, can clearly state what this thing is trying to do. Um, then you just add the, uh, the decorator, uh, give it a unique GUID for your item potent ID, and uh, write your method. Oh, man. Oh, well. This is actually some pretty good stuff. Um, <laughs> so I'll walk through it verbally. So this is taking into account that you already have a deployment in Rally, uh, which the easiest way to do that is if you have a, uh, an environment file, you source that file which will have your OpenStack credentials, the Keystone URL, all of that. And then you um, pass into Rally. You say Rally deployment create dash dash from ENV and give it a name. And it will suck in all it needs from your environment and create the deployment for you. Uh, and then you can install Tempest and then immediately start testing. I think that's most of what I have here. Uh, actually, no. So then the next steps, once you have a deployment, uh, you install Tempest. So you do rally, verify, install, which will lay down, uh, will, will um, uh, clone the, the Tempest repository into its own virtual environment. Uh, it'll have this funny path, like uh, it's dot Tempest for deployment, and then your deployment GUID. And then under there is the root directory for your Tempest uh, install for that deployment. Uh, so once you have the uh, Tempest uh, installed, you do ver uh, rally, verify, install plugin, and point it to your source path for your plugin. And it will then install that plugin for Tempest in that deployment. And then it's just as simple as uh, calling rally, verify, start, uh, pass in a regex for your test, and it will run. And you could have seen all that if that gray square wasn't there. And at the end of the day, uh, you can do rally verify results with the UUID of your uh, verification run. Uh, and I added a few flags here so we can see HTML and give it a file name. And there's only a single test right now, but as you can see, you know, it gives you some uh, useful information. Uh, there's also ways to compare results. So you can do test runs to uh, see if over time if the test is getting slower or if uh, on a particular stamp it's getting slower, that kind of thing. Um, say you, you create your test, you run your test, and something's wrong, or it has an error, or just something you, isn't right. Uh, all you have to do, you can modify the Python code in place, uh, install the plugin again. Uh, as you can see there, rally verify, install plugin, point it to the same source, it'll overwrite the ex existing, plug existing plugin, and then you can re rerun the test, and, um, and you'll see the changes take effect. It's a pretty good workflow, pretty productive. So at this point, I had a demo. Uh, it is on that machine, so I can't do it. <laughs> but it was basically, uh, it wasn't very exciting anyways. It went over basically what I talked about, creating a deployment, uh, installing Tempest for the deployment, installing the plugin, and running it. So there you have it. Uh, conclusions. Implementing 200 test cases is going to take us a lot of time, because some of them are very complicated. Um, and some of them might not be do doable at all. There are things that have to call out to the operating system and, and do things there and look at logs, and you know, that's kind of out of scope for what we can do with the scenario framework. Um, 
Rally is not, I've said this before, but Rally isn't a requirement. Um, so if you make a plugin and open source it, we, we're going to plan on doing with ours. When, you know, once I hit critical mass with it, I'm going to upstream it. And you can just run it through Tempest. Rally's not a requirement. Uh, Rally is a win for me. Uh, it's very easy to install. I didn't mention that. But you can get going with Rally in 15 minutes, and you have a running, a running Rally environment. Um, and my plan is to open source this eventually. I don't know where it's going to live, but uh, you know, I'd like to get maybe some kind of general uh, scenarios for the community. It seems like it would be something that would be useful across, um, you know, across different organizations. There are some existing scenario tests in Tree and Tempest, but there's not a ton of them. Um, and they're good. They test uh, very basic things. So maybe more edge cases we could put into this community plugin. And lastly, uh, I'd started looking at possibly there's a few tests that uh, only run through Horizon. They don't use um, CLI. And I did some initial looking at using the um, Selenium WebDriver Python bindings. And it looks like it, it may be possible uh, to do UI tests, but I can't guarantee it. But that's, uh, that's something I'll be looking at in the near future. Um, and that is it. Um, Feel free to ask any questions. We don't have a mic for questions, so if you, I could ask you to speak up if you do. Uh, that way, I can hear you. Yes, sir. I'm sorry. I, I, I couldn't hear you. I'm sorry. <laughs> Say again. Well, that's that's the goal, right? So it, we have this whole manual test suite that does all kinds of you know things that don't have test coverage. Yes. Well, we no. I mean, we don't have any APIs that are outside of OpenStack, so we're testing OpenStack APIs. I, I'm not quite sure I follow you. Yes. Yeah. No, no, I, I'm just using what's in Tempest. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Any other yes, questions? sir. What do you mean? Like, uh, would you like to create a plugin and uh, do you want to find its requirements file? Well, that your, your deployment has to be configured already, right? So before all this happens, we have uh, you know deployment plan, the reference architecture, all the bits are there and running uh, as we want to test them. So it's in a state that we're ready to test. So my plugin isn't interacting on that level at all. No. Also, yeah. you want you create a plugin, you could add like a additional configurations and additional stuff that your plugin that would have to have. When you create a plugin, you implement a class. Uh, if you don't need nothing, you just put pass and nothing happens. But you could add your whatever your plugin needs to have, like extra configs or something like that. Yeah, I didn't mention that. Yeah, that's a good point, is you can add your own config um, stuff inside your plugin. So you can extend the uh, existing Tempest Conf. Yes? Oh. Mm -hmm. So, you know, testing it, we create users and we need users on our web database makes no sense. So, if we want to build that in Tempest, is there a way for this configuration that we can turn on and off specific tests based on parameters? Well, the regex, you can go by name in regex, right? So, you can give your, and you can also use tags, which I'm not super familiar with. Like, if we either have one test to run users. Okay. But if we're testing MySQL database, then we want to run that test. Yep. 
Or yeah. You, or you could add extra configurations yeah. and put the curators there. You can skip, skip you, flag. That's you have test. That I don't know. It only runs on MariaDB, let's say. So you could have, when you create a plugin, you could add extra configurations and maybe even add, 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 skip the creator for that. You own your plugin, so you can do whatever you want. So you could do a, a skip, if, whatever. You could do that. That's what you would do. You say if this is Maria but DB, you, you'd skip, basically. And you can put that logic into a uh, decorator, I believe, is where you do that. Yeah. Yes, sir. No, no, I haven't heard of it, and uh, so, that's something I got to do is some homework because I don't want to reinvent the wheel either, right? So, exactly. right, right. Yeah. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thank you. Please. Oh, yes, sir. I'm not aware of uh, a UI for Rally yet. I don't know if there's a project that there... I'm sorry? Uh, so I, I wrote a report plugin for Rally which does compare. Uh, I noticed just when I was putting this thing together it was deprecated, so I have to figure out why. But it did just that. So you had two test runs, and you could do a compare. You could set the threshold to say if it's, you know, if the difference is less than a second, say it's not different, right? You want to find things that are, you know, taking a second longer and things like that. So, so that was there. But as far as a, a UI, as far as I know, there's still no UI to rally. I mean, you could always wrap this in a UI, right? You could make calls and make your own UI, um, you know, because it's all RESTful. I'm sorry? It comes at the subunit level. So you would get your, your results, and then it processes the subunit uh, test results and spits out a file. Yeah. It just builds a dict and then transforms that. Uh, you can compare two test results. Yeah, yeah. And it just paints. You know, you can export it as HTML or JSON or, or just tab delimited as well. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I, I'm not. I got to talk to Boris and find out why. Because <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, if I if you do Tempest verify compare, it, it you can't do it. It says it's deprecated, and I, I don't know why. It says use task results, but there's no compare task results, and it's not a task, so I'm not really really sure what's going on with it. Okay, I okay. I apologize deeply for the technical difficulties. Oh, thank you. Hold on. We have a prize. Thanks for coming, guys. <laughs>